Hey guys, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Cuggins. And this is Trek Yards, and we are back again to talk about some very exciting stuff. Yeah. It's, you know, a lot of things evolve and change, and I mean, especially a year. A year seems so short, but at the same time, so long. Like, yep. how much have we changed in a year? I mean, I used to be, you know, three feet tall a year ago, you know, in diapers, you know. Yeah, it was a long time ago. And things change quite substantially. They get bigger, they get nicer. And here we are. Look at Trek Yards is all I've, sleek now. I've, I've grown too. Yes, I get, I get where you're going with that now. Huh. It's funny. Anyway, what are we looking at today, Samuel? And what are, what am I talking about as far as <laughs> changes go? Well, the big news on everyone's lips is Star Trek Discovery, both for the good and the bad. But we love ships. We love analyzing and we love yes. thinking about design. We got a ship design revealed last year at San Diego Comic-Con, July. We did a wonderful reaction. People really went behind us and had a look. We had a 3D model made by Barry Chapman pretty damn quickly. We did some great stuff with it. We analyzed it. You guys loved it. And then they've been slowly releasing little bits and bobs. But at San Diego Comic Con this year, we got to see what we assume is the final. It's on, tr it's on posters and also in live footage. And guess what? Barry made us another model. Good job, Barry. Just before he went on holiday, he, he put me... Serious challenge there. He gave himself like six days to build it, and then our, our friend Matt Wilson then did the textures, and we've now got 3D model of both, and we are here to show you a comparative study of the alpha and production versions of the USS Discovery. Disclaimer, fan models, with the original version being slightly less accurate given that we didn't get proper orthos, but the second version, the production version, we did get a good top view. That's a lot closer, we think. Um, so grain of salt, mm -hmm. but it's going to be somewhat close and definitely close enough to this sort of video. And we've got a whole lot of renders to compare. And we'll talk about the evolution and how things change, big things, sell things, and to mm -hmm. see the ship like you've never seen it before. Because guess what? They're like five images out there, but I've just made a whole load. So we're seeing it in new ways. Um, and I think it's also worth saying that when Barry finished the original model for this, <clears throat> he had full orthos, yep. uh, which he shared with us to show us his progress, which I then passed along to John Eves. And John Eves gave us a, one or two little tips, and, and Barry mm -hmm. made some changes. So this is pretty much as accurate as we can get it as without having seen it on screen yes. or officially seen anything else. So yes. there you have it, guys. Trekyards, we've tried to give you the most accurate model available, and Barry Chapman did a fantastic job. And so did, who was, who was the texturing guy Matt, again? Sorry? Matt Wilson. Matt Wilson, wow. <laughs> um, it looks fantastic. But Yeah, it's, uh, a lot of custom work there. So obviously, yeah. this first... Shot. I mean, we've, we've been teasing it on it for a while. That's how it used to look. And if we slowly fade to how it looks now, oh. that is some change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stuart, first mm. reaction, I seem really back to back because it does change it a little bit. <laughs> it's night and day. It really is. Yep. I remember the complaints from San Diego Comic Con last year going, oh my God, it looks so, the CGI looks so bad. You know, if that's the quality they're going with, that's awful. And you can tell it's CGI. It's like they, they scrambled that one together in a week, guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we knew that wasn't going to look, look, it wouldn't be, look like that on screen. So yep. this new one, um, even though it is our version, the texturing and stuff is so great. The changes they've made are grand in their scope as far mm -hmm. as design goes. So we're eager to talk about it and all the little subtle differences. I'm blown away by this new one. Um, there's a few things I don't like, but we'll get into that as we discuss it. But uh, yeah, I'm super impressed and I'm really looking forward to seeing this thing fly on screen in September. So we are I'm super very excited. soon to that. This is, this is, yes. yeah. I mean, I think, as I said previously, and if we keep you know, both on screen at the same time here, the what we said originally, the changes they've made is keep the same shape, keep the same ideas, but give it its own voice. You know, we linked a lot of these things in the alpha version to Canon, like the Bassards being a bit Franklin-y, you know, three mm -hmm. means less advanced, the grill, lots of little things linked to other things. This new ship, maybe less links, but stylistically, it is, a, it is its own thing more. Mm -hmm. And if it's going to define this new era, um, or, or the one time zone before TOS, then having its own voice is kind of good, and as you say, this is this is our fan texturing. But the the detail of the model, the the I didn't think I would like how the texturing was on this final model, but you know mm -hmm. the, the 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 Azteking is really nice. The way it's brought in those lines on the secondary hull. I mean, these things have been revealed to us. The other version was very bland. It was very yellow. It was very 
yeah, no, I, 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 it is night and day, and the refinements. Mm-hmm. I think instead of going to the top right away, let's take a look at the back, kind of back three-quarter view. And here we've got the original Discovery and, Alpha. And, and Stuart, there's so much dead space to the shot. Uh, there, there, there is. I, I, I guess you screwed up your render. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. He's usually more professional than this, oh, but, no. uh, but if we switch to the 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 after the new one, you'll see why that's the case. <laughs> this thing's got a lot of stuff dragging behind it, <laughs> but I, it, it looks cool. I mean. <sighs> I don't want to get into things I don't really like right away, but you can see the difference here, the design choices they've made. I think they listened to the fans when the, the first one came out. A lot of people were complaining about this, the, sh the ship and the engines in particular, and I think they've definitely addressed those issues and concerns. So, but there you have it. So that's the before and after back views, and it yeah. looks like a totally different class of ship. Like It looks like the, the alpha version could even exist. And discovery as well, right beside the actual discovery, um, as a different class of ship. So, yeah, and again, like I say, disclaimer: this is all pinch of salt, but it's close. Yeah, I mean, the original problems, and we'll talk about detailed parts later on. I, mean, I, I when you put in this content, I thought the nacelles were reasonably well balanced for the original discovery. Obviously, a bit boxy, but suddenly realized, oh, they're very stubby. They're actually, you know, some of look at these new ones. It's like, oh, mm. damn, um, that is the big change, and obviously, the other big change is the. It is the secondary hull. Now, this is why I think it's time to go to the top view because you see those shapes better. And we did get a really good t top view of the ships. This is just about perfect. The angle, I mean, they did quite drastically change. It is now really sweeping back. You have this neat little mm -hmm. arrowhead, and now you've got this almost that um, self fighter shape. Much more aggressive, well, not aggressive, but much more pointy, much more lean, much more. Yeah. As John would say, or potentially, it looks faster standing still. It has that extra bit of something. Well, what are your thoughts on this radical angle change? <clears throat> I think the reason they decided to do that and make it look so so substantially different in the secondary hull was, again, based on the fan reaction. A lot of people are saying, oh, it looks like a D7 body at the back. You know, the Federation and the Klingon ship merged together. I think they were trying to step away from that because they didn't want to imply that. So they m made these drastic changes to the angles. You can still see some kind of a Klingon-esque design there. But as I've stated all along, I never believed that that was the intention to have a half Klingon ship. So this definitely does help with that. I mean, people aren't going to immediately see that when they, mm -hmm. when they see this bigger shape. So that's I think they were addressing that issue when they made these changes. And we know, too, we've heard from people behind the scenes that this ship was very much designed by committee it went back and forth num number of times a lot of people um, put their input in on it and changes were made over the course of months so this ship took forever to get to this final stage um, while still trying to retain a lot of the original aspects that make star trek star trek so i, I really got to give them credit for that although designed by committee too many sh cooks in the kitchen never really turns out so well so well, uh, at least I, pre you know, I people were saying, oh, the Shinzo, that's the Shinzo, you know, whatever, how you pronounce it, the Shinzo. Um, oh, that'll be the new hero ship. Cause they're, 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 you know, the response to the Discovery, they're going to undo that and make the old hero ships. Like, yeah. they have plans for a reason. You know, there's that design was in place, this design was in place. It's that I appreciate that they had a concept, which was the Ralph Macquarie, let's use a familiar and canonical Trek shape. It exists in two places in the Trek canon. Yes, background, very, very background, but they are there. So it is a precedent. And it's just a melding of, as I've said all the time, a warp delta and an X01. It's familiar shapes combined. They kept with that. They just made it something different. They reproportioned everything. I mean, straight away, you can see, now, I will say the scaling. We don't know the scaling of this new version. Um, mm. We had sources on the first version. This version, they're not sure. The, the, it's been modified so much in in post that we don't want to put our hat in the ring and say what the scale is. So for this version, um, these aren't meant to be scale comparison charts. Hence charts, mm -hmm. why I haven't got anything with the Connie or anything. It's just, let's match the saucer um, and go with that. But as you can see, they have changed the um, amount or the, the, the percentage of each in terms of volume. The saucer is now smaller compared to the body. If you look at the first one, I mean, that was a big, big saucer. It kind of feels mm. bulky now. This new one, much smaller saucer, much thinner. 
but the arrowhead being so much further back actually keeps that from feeling too bulky and then you'll see the hugely mm -hmm. long nacelles rather than thick nacelles so they've, di they've reproportioned everything to look faster to look sleeker to look more yeah. different and yeah and in regards to size i mean if you go back to that rear shot of the discovery you can see how much thicker that saucer is in comparison to the new one uh they seem to and, but the windows sizes say that to me that the new discovery is much bigger than the older one uh assuming that those old window sizes were correct because again that's just barry's I mean, chat Barry I mean, chapman's version the thing is we did see the saucer so if you, know, if you yeah. put in two lines of saucer windows then that's what it is i know that matt when he he put the textured windows in he based that on things he could see as well so again i, I yeah. trust these guys um they put as much effort in as, as i try to um but yeah they've definitely changed the scaling um yeah, it almost seems like the new one's bigger. Um, it might only have one deck in the saucer, but I think it's a much bigger saucer. Um, well, as far as uh, saucer thickness goes. I don't know, just based on the window size, I'm, get, I'm willing to bet that this one's bigger than the original version. Well, I mean, if we go to, I guess, picture 13 for us, and again, I'm actually really enjoying lighting this Discovery model. I've done a couple of animations now, and you guys will see them. I'm actually really enjoying working with this ship. <laughs> but again, that, that's a lot of it, is the beautiful physical detail and the textures are really nicely done. If you look mm -hmm. at that bridge module, um, if you go back to the number 12, Barry put Barry refused to build their bridge module because he hated it so much. They put in a re refit bridge module. So we've always had that as a pinch of salt. But you can see the rough scaling of that. It's a certain size. You look at this new version, it, you know, again, if that's roughly the window of a bridge, that's a huge saucer. Yes, it might be thinner, yeah. but it's absolutely ginormous. I mean, you're, you're talking Enterprise D level of size potentially. Um, pot potentially. I mean, we've seen the the Discovery transporter room huge. We've seen corridors pretty down, pretty down big. So I think it could be an indication that we are going with that bigger. People rely. I think people relate to start. You know, space should be about these big ships. You look at you know Halo, Battlestar, uh, Stargate, Star Wars. It's thousands of people in, on a ship. Maybe the modern audience they're trying to appeal to doesn't un you know doesn't believe in the vision of. Well, this ship is only 200 people. It's only the size of an aircraft carrier. So they want to go for big, so they can say, you know... Mm -hmm. I don't know. Again, they, they, they go in that JJ model, and again, we can see they have a window, um, which they, they you can see in the concept images, or a big hole, but it's very obviously a window detail, which is very disappointing, and it gives you a very easy scaling of the, of the size of the ship, and it's huge. But if we go to the next picture, which is 5.5 for us, um, this was a picture we saw from the trailer, you know, it coming out of the asteroid base from this angle. And I thought this angle was one of its best. I mean, e every ship looks good from ang certain angles and can look bad from certain angles. That's just a fact, and you're lucky if it looks good from every angle. It's like the NX refit. It's so difficult to get an angle that represents the refit nature of it without just being the bottom. You know what I mean? It, some ships are difficult. This is quite a good angle. The new version, this is how it would look mm. coming out of the space dock now, I mean, mm -hmm. do you think that's better or worse as an angle? Because I do think the ship works from quite a few angles. What do you think? Um, I wouldn't say it's better or worse. I like it equally with the uh, original one. Um, again, it's got more bulk. It's got more size yep. in that lower secondary hull. So I think they really did pad this ship out to make it bigger. Um, yeah, I don't... I think it's a nice angle, actually. <laughs> The neck neck looks a little off to me in this in this shot. Looks like the saucer's sticking out a little too much, mm -hmm. but um, it's nothing major that I would complain about. So I I, I I dig it. It looks good. It is worth saying that you're noticing, fans of ours, that we've we've lit the facade holes orange, or we've heard from the inside source again that that is roughly what they look like. There is some lighting, so we're not putting ourselves on a limb there. We've been told that that does exist. So. And Boyd's it look better. As soon as you light those, yeah, it, it comes together, I think. Um, the, the, oh, the, absolutely. Just being black, but seeing that familiar, just, just little colours. It's like if you made those blue, like the JJ verse, it would look... But the, it makes such a difference aesthetically. And the next the next shot, though, 7.7 uh, .7 and then 7, this angle is okay of the original Alpha Discovery. You see how bo blocky it is, you see how bulk it is. You go to mm -hmm. the the new version. I really, really. I mean, you've seen the shot uh, of of it traveling at warp. This angle, I think, is its best angle. You don't you don't yeah. get the feeling that the engines are are needlessly long, because you, know, <laughs> you, you can cut off at least thirty percent, twenty percent. But this yeah. angle, I mean, we've accepted the cutouts in the saucer. We, you know, functional reasons is likely incoming. But this angle, I think, works really well. It's, it has 
you know, the Enterprise D looks great from this angle. Other ships do. I think this is its winning angle. Um, what do you think? Well, I agree with everything you said. Uh, the the subtle changes that have been made to this from the original, uh, especially on the neck detailing, really makes the yep. new one kind of work for me. Yep. Uh, the cutouts in the saucer I really don't have an issue with. I know a lot of people have. I mean, I'm sure we'll discuss that close with a better shot of the top of the saucer or whatever. Yep. But the the detailing they've added to the sensor array, the the new engines from the front look fantastic. Although I do I do still like the old design with the three bizarre collectors. Yeah. Uh, everything about this says that this is an evolution from Enterprise era, in my opinion. Um, a lot of the, a lot of visual similarities, especially with the oh the texturing. You know, it is not one hundred percent official canon um, that it's going to look exactly like that. But I think that. As far as Enterprise being in the picture, this is a direct evolutionary descendant from that design process, that thought thought ideal. Uh, so I, I, I simply love it, the things they've done. Even the, the deflector, really, I like that with the addition of the spikes in there, <laughs> uh, which yeah. is good. They needed to keep that for the TOS aesthetic. And I know when I was talking to Barry when he was doing this, he was in deflector hell, as he put it, because he hated adding all those little things in there. But I think it's fantastic. Again, we can we can compare it to what the cage should look like, but that's not fair. Um, we do, and we yeah. and we just blankly say it doesn't work because it, it it doesn't work. But we also have to look beyond that and say, well, we're told it's this era, but it's obviously its own style. Design can be good in its own way. I mean, look at the Shenzhou Shenzhou. It, it it looks like a twenty fourth century NX um, success, and it's great. Mm -hmm. But it's still you know still a wonderful design, and I love. Yeah, the, the the points you having a dish is very tricky, but it's got a two prong, which is the evolution. Columbia has it two prong, which is a subtle detail, but they paid attention. Shinzo has it, and then yeah, but like I said, we'll have details of that later on. But I will I had a quote from from Barry because I want to make sure that he was included in this specifically about <laughs> building this model. Well, I already uh, did quote him once, so ha, yes. there you go. <laughs> no, I I want to jump on that as well. And again, I I, I pushed him for physical detail, and he did such a wonderful job. Uh, my only quote would be a definite improvement of version 1, and actually easy to build. Only criticism is the deflector. I know Stuart likes it, but it's too <laughs> clunky with the rest of the design. I've mm -hmm. gone more simple TOS style, so double double down on that. Um, but I do think from this angle, it's a better looking ship. Obviously it helps with a better looking model, it's a, it's a better model, but the, the, the other engines are clunky, the shapes mm -hmm. are clunky, I, I prefer how the neck refines in. I prefer, in fact, the smooth. Like they've, rather than having the the saucer be as broad and big and multiple deck, having a nice thin saucer, even have that rim, like a rim of lights inside of a, of a rim, kind of looks cool. Mm -hmm. Like it, yeah, it it does look nice um, aesthetically. But yeah. should we talk about details, Stuart? Let's talk about details. So, so pick a detail and then we'll go from there, Stuart. Well, we were just talking about the nastiness of the deflector, so let's do that. <laughs> Okay. It's not nastiness. So the first one we got here is the uh, alpha version of the deflector, which, again, this is just Barry's interpretation of what we saw. The one we saw, actually, in the original promo was much more simple. Uh, a lot of people complained about that deflector, saying it's very motion picture era with the blue glow and nothing there structurally. So um, it looks all right. It looks all right. But when we move to the next picture, which is, of course, the newest one, this looks cool. Um, I love the addition of the, the sensor things in there. Like I said, it ma brings it back to the era that it's supposed to be in. Um, even if it doesn't really look exactly like the, the TOS version, that's fine. Yeah. I got to admit the ring around there that he used, I don't know if that was how close that is to what we actually saw from the Discovery itself, but it's very much like Enterprise E um, mm. styling. Um, look, And uh, one of my friends was t talking about it and it said it looks like the Borg should be you know placing an in interplexing beacon on it by the looks of it just with all the things sticking out of it and that that original look there with, with the Enterprise E so I don't know I'm a big fan of the deflector design I kind of prefer the original one the way it's kind of set in a little bit more and the angles that mm. it, it had this one's more blunt which I don't have a huge issue with I kind of prefer the other look though personally so that's where yeah. I stand. Obviously, we'll cut to the. You're right, Barry did an enhancement, as it were. But if we cut to the original, yeah, you're right. It's, it's got an inner, exactly motion picture. But I mean, that's an easy text just to add. I mean, that's easy in physical detail. And a, a rim of lights outside of that, and like I said, this new one um, has a Enterprise Z, has a 
levering and the two prongs. I mean, we haven't seen a very, very high detail shot of this. So I'm going to reserve judgment to what sort of deflector this looks. I mean, what Barry did was, is fine, but we didn't see anything up close. I'm excited I to see... So I just want to jump in with my two cents here. I think that the one, the final version on Discovery is going to be much more intricate than this, yes. and not just not just have the two standard big ones. I think it's going to have a few different lengths and different sizes, from what I can see from the original pictures. Yeah, there's like a cowling that we haven't included here because it was difficult to see. My, my gut yeah. is that hopefully they will look almost identical to TOS bumps, but then more and more technical as they get into the actual emitter part. Is my hopes and in close-ups it's like oh this is obviously it simplifies mm -hmm. down to a more efficient thing um yeah i, I appreciate that it's a uh, an, an emitter um but let's talk about something else and you said it's one of your favorite elements but the engines mm -hmm. of the original of the original alpha we had mm -hmm. i think it's one of our favorite elements overall we had three glowing basards with the franklin-esque cowling and what, what do we say that was uh linking to technology wise it was that it's so inefficient you had to have three yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we've never seen that sort of design before, and that was quite cool. The new version, I mean, straight away, more physical detail, more refined. They put a lot more thought into it. I mean, that's one thing the whole design says. They put more thought in. They, yeah. I mean, John, you know, the original design was rushed together. This is months of refinement. You can sort of see the, the cohesiveness of the design, I think, in this, in this one way more. What do you think of the new version, then? And now we're seeing it sort of up close um, in comparison. Well, as I've always said since the beginning, I really loved the original version. I thought it was a nice new take on uh, Starship nacelles, thicker, bulkier for the time. I liked it. I liked the three, the three um, bizarre collector look. The new ones look fantastic as well, though, um, and they do kind of have a TOS kind of vibe to them a little bit. The front, uh, the main one looks like a big stoplight, <laughs> um, but. There's one thing I wish they would have included, and even if it was just sticking out of one of those bottom smaller ones, but like a, a spike, an antenna, to <laughs> tie in with the cage style uh, nacelles, I think that would have been cool. So even like the one closest to the ship have a spike coming out of that instead of it being red. I think that would have been a very neat visual tie-in, and uh, you know, an evolutionary step. And eventually they moved it up onto the actual Bazaar Collector itself for the uh, Cage Era Enterprise, but. <clears throat> Yeah, I think it's I think it's great. Um, I'm I'm hoping that it looks uh, hoping that it's red. I mean, we've heard that it is possibly. So um, the ones underneath, if they light up red, that'd be cool too. But we kind of need if they went another color, like maybe blue with those ones, something like that to kind of make it unique. But overall, the design seems almost too advanced for TOS. But I can see some kind of TOS ness in it. So I do it's, think it's that's because you're looking for it. It's not there, but you're looking for it. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. Our job is to yeah. try and make these things connect. That's sort of why you come here, is to see our analysis and see us try and put the thought in. But Yeah. You know, um, um, so, yeah, overall, I'm happy with the new designs, except the fact that they're so long. I loved the stubby nature of the first ones and how they kind of ended at the back of the ship mm. instead of having the classic trailing like the Constitution class does. And these ones really, really, really trail a little bit too long. Like you said earlier, you could cut 30% off them, and I'd still be happy with them. <laughs> I'd be a lot more happy with them. Well, we have a picture of that later, which we can talk about as okay, well. Cause okay. it, it's, yeah, very obvious. Yeah, for these engines, I mean, I asked Barry to include like a very subtle, very, very subtle dome effect inside of the Bissar, because I'm very hoping that it's not flat. There's some minimal... Mm -hmm. That's conceptual, but I, I hope so. But I mean, yeah, I, I like the idea of having, you know, it's a, if it's this bigger ship, you can't do it all in one facade. You can't intake all the matter in one, or maybe you need one to be one set of matter, and the other ones are designed to take in secondary matter for a different process. Maybe it needs, you know, tri lithium residue. I mean, that, that's the most ridiculous one because it destroys stars, but, you know, it needs a secondary matter. Um, to fuel something, and therefore you have to have secondary uh, facades, which again, form for its function, and I quite like that, then it does push to advancement by having a single facade does it all, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I do mm -hmm. I do wish, and I'd be tempted to refine this version and make it more prime by adding a TOS facade, see the glowies, see how this design would, would reflect, because the fact is, if this ship is old, if the design is old, I mean, what if this ship, you know, had been in the construction phase for five years before it was launched? I mean, you, you know, you can get further and further away from TOS if, if the Constitution class is worthy, the, the newest, the best, the, the most forward thinking. I mean, thing is, think about it this way, in DS9, they were still building Mirandas for a long time up until DS9. 
you know, they weren't yeah. all the seventy-year-old Mirandas left because we saw a lot of them get annihilated. You know, they some of them probably still even built as secondary ships. So if this was an older design, I, I think what we're looking at here, I think you know, people in the Discovery team, they must. I mean, they've said multiple times they want to link to canon. They can't throw out the rule book. We've got thi this and this. Mm -hmm. You're putting it here. We ignore the J.J. Abrams stuff because that's parallel. It's not in the prime timeline. It's been, you know, retcon, stone pegs, it's all, all alternate universe. There's nothing prime about it. This to this, well, what if this is the intermediate step, the, the evolution between, and then it goes back to TOS, and then goes back to TMP, which is a radical redesign, so then goes back to, you know, uh, I guess Ambassador, you know, it, it, can, it can piggyback, jump, mm -hmm. leapfrog yeah. the different stages. So this is the in-between step between those two circle eras. There's a long time in between. Um, I wish that, you know, the, the fact is we're going to see more detail in this model. That's the problem. To get to TOS, it's like, well, that's not very detailed. How can you make it too detailed? But as, as, I, as I always said, I think of the inside of the TOS engines as being NX1 engines just with a cowling over. Like, they're so mm. powerful, you have to have a completely internal structure with plating so the radiation doesn't kill the crew. Mm hmm so if you ripped that away, it maybe could look similar to this. You know, it has all advanced plates and things. Um, they just haven't gone for that sleek, sleek minimalist style. Um, but yeah, it certainly doesn't fit the era. But as, as an engine design, it's interesting. And I've always liked. We you know, both love the TMP shapes. You know, mm -hmm. the other style. Um, and he has got those fins at the back, which are a la, you know, yeah. Enterprise B. That is this week's Trek Yards done and dusted. Next week we've got another great part. Yes, the continuation next week. Tune in. So seven days and just uh, click on that link. So we'll see you then. See you then, guys. <laughs>